So you drop some hard earned cash on RPG developer Barkin, and now you want to know, how do I make a game with this? Look, I could sit here and go over all of the UI and explain what each and every button does, but that's boring. Instead, I'm going to show you how to jump right on into it and start developing. Now, first, you're going to need to head back to the store page and pick up some of those sweet, juicy free assets. There is a metric truck ton of extra stuff you can get for free, so do that. First, you hit Create New. Duh. Then, it just lets you know it's going to ask a couple questions so it can get the right template for your game. Hit Next. This is where you name the game. I shouldn't have to explain this to you. It's a name. It's like the first thing you learn. Also, you see this little working parts section down here? This is where the game's data is going to be stored. Hitting next will bring you over to this screen here, which asks you what assets you want to import into your project. You can go simple, which only imports the minimum amount of data required to start a game, or you can click normal, which will load up the game's default assets. Let's go ahead and do that. This is where you select the images for your main character. Don't worry, you can change this later. It's just here for some reason. For moving, you double click on that after it loads. It loads up the asset picker and this is where it's going to prompt you to select your walking animation for your main character. You're going to click on this folder here, 2D casts, hero casts, and we're just going to go with hero B. It'll preview the sprite here where you can just hit add and exit. Next, under for layout, you're going to double click here. It's going to load up the asset picker again and this is where we're going to select a face for our main character. Images, textures, 2D casts, Hero Casts, Hero B, and under four layouts, we're just gonna pick her beautiful face. 2D forever, 3D never. Add an exit, and we're just gonna name her Levelette. Hit next. This is gonna set up the basic camera. Don't worry, you can change this later, so just hit play a central view for now. The operation method is essentially your controls. Don't worry too much about the tank controls or the side view operation unless you are making a side view game. For now, we're just gonna do top view operation. Now you can do this with jump or with inertial movement. We're going to not do that now, just because it complicates shit. Lastly, good job. You can start editing your game. Now it's going to ask if you want to auto-generate a map, or if you want a flat terrain. We're just going to hit no, because we want a flat terrain. One eternity later. And there you go! Congratulations! You have a game! Alright guys, clock off time, we've done it, we've made a game. Psych! It's going to load you into this map, and you can see your list of maps by coming up here onto the top left and clicking Map List. As you can see, we've got Map 1. If you didn't like map 1, you can click add and you can create a new map. We won't worry about that for now though. Let's get to work on editing this map. This is a 3D space and if you're unfamiliar with 3D spaces, here's a quick control tutorial. Holding right click will rotate around the 3D space. Holding middle click will shift around the 3D space. Scrolling in and out will scroll in and out of the 3D space. On the right hand side, you've got your toolbar. This is how you're gonna edit the terrain. You can use the rectangle tool, which will select a portion of the terrain. You can use the line tool, which will draw a line through the terrain. You can use the enclose tool, which as you draw around where you finish, it will fill the areas in between. Or you can use the fill tool, where it'll just select all of it. Let's just select the rectangle tool for now. If we wanted to manipulate this terrain, we'd select an area, and then you use the plus key on your keyboard to raise the terrain. We can select another bit of terrain and use the minus key to lower the terrain. Let's see how this works with all the tools. Here's the line tool. Here's the ellipse tool. Here is the select section tool. And that's all you really need to know for raising and lowering the terrain. Next, you can draw on textures. You can do this with the pen tool, and it's going to select the texture from this right-hand side box here. More on that later. With the pen tool, you can draw it on. You can click the paint bucket tool, which will fill everything that is the same texture that you click on it. Notice how this green part over here isn't filled. You can hit the sample tool. If I sample this grass, I can then draw it over the rest of these textures over here. And underneath all that, there is a draw terrain tool, but I prefer to just use these tools up here. So let's get this terrain back to flat and make a map.
Now that we've done painting the terrain of our map, it's time to texture it. For textures, over on the far right hand side you can see this folder up here which is reserved and you've got color block or you've got 128 or 64. I'm just going to select 128 and click on the rock texture and then I'm just going to simply draw in a path. Then down here you can see we've got this little indentation area for some water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the select section tool, click on that section, then I'm going to select the fill tool, find a water texture and just fill that in. And now we've got a textured map but it's still looking quite barren so it would be good to add in some clutter. To do that over on the right hand side we're going to go up to the objects tab. You'll see we have a folder for nature, we'll click on that. We'll click on the plants folder and click on tree and it's going to load up a whole bunch of different trees here. So what you can do is you can click on a tree here and then select anywhere in the map to place that tree down. We can do that with another tree, maybe this clicking anywhere on the map and placing that down. You can do that for things like flowers, grasses, And moving out of the plants folder, we can click on the rock and stone folder. Place down some stones around the map. And maybe even some larger rocks. Now, we have a pretty good looking level in our new game. To test this out, we're going to go up to the very top in the middle. You'll see a button that says test play. It'll load up our beautiful blue screen of life. And we can hit new game. And now we have our very first level in RPG Developer Barkin. Before you know it, we're going to be making the next Octopath Traveler. It'll be the Bacon Path Traveler. Join me in the next tutorial where we go over making your first cutscene and um, subscribe.